We are entering into part two series of the learning module on introductory to financial accounting. Part two series basically deals with the preparation of financial statements for various forms of ownership. Starting with the books of non-profit organization as enacted by Act number no. 71 of 1997 as amended. This learning area assumes that you are able to apply the double entry system to prepare different accounts in the general ledger. You are also able to properly draw up the trial balance. Let us answer the question, what is a non-profit organization? Hereafter, abbreviated as NPO in the notes. An NPO is an establishment created to provide a service to certain interest groups. Its existence do not depend on profit motive. It exists as a body corporate. Ownership is not vested on members. The NPO Act prohibits the distribution of gains derived from its activities to members except a reasonable compensation that will be paid for services rendered, which is called honoraria. Assets and income derived are used for non-profit objectives to defray the running expenses. Wealth, expansion, and self-preservation is built by surpluses generated by its operating activities. It is governed by the NPO Act number no. 71 of 1997 as amended and the organizational constitution. The scope of NPO Act covers the following establishments of interest groups. The nonprofit organization as we described earlier, the incorporated voluntary association which has been established for purposes of public interest. Participation of the interest group in this category is not as extensive and massive as the above NPO. One such example is the body corporate consisting of two to three persons representing the interest of tenants and landlord in a particular residential area for accommodation purposes. The third are the non-profit company that has been registered with the Department of Social Welfare as a non-profit organization. Any of the above organization can apply to SARS for public benefit organization status so as to be exempted from income tax liability. Before an NPO can commence its activities, the NPO Act requires that an organization submit its application for registration together with its organizational constitution to the Directorate of the Department of Social welfare. The organization should also register with SARS for exemption purposes. The organization should be in possession of a certificate of registration which has been issued by the Department of Social Welfare. The advantage of this registration provides the organization with a degree of legal formality and public accountability to attract funding from donors. Governance refers to proper control and operating systems to ensure a high degree of responsibility and accountability in the way the affairs of the organization is run. The first such control being the NPO Act number no. 71 of 1997 as amended, which governs its establishment and existence. The second control is the organizational constitution, 
which specifies the rules and regulations of its operation, which are consistent with the legal framework of common law and the NPO Act. The third control is the board members, the body corporate, and the steering committees that are appointed by participants referred to as interest groups. Thirdly, the compliance with tax exemption conditions is a good indication of good governance. Lastly, some corporations are expected to comply with corporate governance, which are mechanisms and processes that control some organization, especially the nonprofit companies that has registered as NPOs. Examples of nonprofit organization according to interest groups or sectors are the sports and recreation, charity organization, cooperatives, faith based organization, non governmental organization, arts and culture, as well as professional bodies. For accounting purposes, we will concentrate on specific accounts dealing with transactions affecting only the NPOs. The basic accounting equation principles remain the same. In the general ledger, we will draft the following specific accounts. The subscription or membership fee account to record members annual fees paid. The entrance fees account to record once of payments received from new members who are joining the club. The honorarium account to record remunerations paid to the secretary or the treasurer for services rendered. The receipts and payment account to record the summary of all transaction that took place within a financial period. The entries that are recorded in the receipts and payment account are similar entries that are recorded in the cash receipt journal and the cash payment journal. In practice, it is not necessary to draft the two journals. Instead of the journals, a cash book is drafted and then the totals are posted to the receipts and payment account in the general ledger. The next account that will be drafted is the income and expenditure account that will summarize all the income accounts and expenses account that falls under the nominal section of the trial balance. The last account will be the trading account to record transactions of fundraising nature. The second book that will be drafted is the general journal to record the omissions, errors, and adjusting entries. The third will be to draft the financial statement according to acceptable standards for submission to the directorate and SARS. Examples of such statement are the receipts and payment, which uses similar transactions that were recorded in the receipt and payment account in the general ledger. This time we will be drafting a statement. The income and expenditure statement, which is more or less similar to the profit and loss statement that we normally present for retailing enterprises. This statement, income and expenditure, will use the same entries that were recorded in the income and expenditure account in the general ledger. The last statement will be the statement of financial position. 
Some constitution requires the appointment of an accounting officer for the compilation of the financial reports. The funds of the organization are divided into two categories, being the revenue income, representing operating income that is used to defray day-to-day -day expenses. And the second category is the capital fund, which is used for major or capital projects. Examples of revenue income are the entrance or joining fee, which are ones of payments paid by members who are joining the club. The membership or subscription fee paid annually by registered members in the club. Donations received from donors and the fundraising activities which represent additional income from fund raising activities. Examples of capital funds is the special funds in the form of bequest, which are funds received by the organization left in a will of the deceased. The second example of special funds are the grants or government subsidies. The second example of capital funds are the expendable funds, which are sponsorship for a particular general activity. For example, a donor may extend funds that can be used as sponsorship for bursaries. These funds cannot be used for any other objective except for payment of bursaries. The third example of capital fund is the capitalized entrance fees. These are the same fees that are paid by new members who are joining the club. The constitution of an organization may stipulate that entrance fees should be capitalized. If that is the case, then the entrance fees will not be used to pay for day-to-day -day running expenses of the organization. The entrance fees will then be treated as an item of capital nature. Lastly, are the surpluses that were generated from the operating activities of an organization. These surpluses will be accumulated on a yearly basis in the account called the accumulated funds, which is one example of the capital accounts. How to account for income received and expenses paid by the NPO. Income is solely derived from membership fees, which are fees that are received on an annual basis from registered members. Entrance fees are once off payment done by new members who are joining the organization. Fundraising activities, this is income that is derived from selling of refreshments, or from organizing social gatherings. Sponsorship and donations, this is income received from donors. All this income that has been received will be banked and recorded in the receipt and payment account in the period in which the cash is received. For the payments that have been incurred and paid this will be recorded in the receipt and payment account in the period in which cash is expended. In other words, the receipt and payment account will be drawn in the general ledger. This account will be debited with all the receipts for the year and credited with all the payments that were made during the year. 
Let us look at this example. Let's start with the requirement. You are required to prepare the receipts and payment account for the year ended 31st December 2014. Remember, in this account, we should reflect a summary of all transactions that occurred during the current year. Secondly, we are required to prepare the membership or subscription fee account, which is an account that will be prepared to reflect only the subscriptions that was received from members. The following transactions is a summary of Serengeti Tennis Club for the year ended 31st December 2014. Transaction 1. The following are the closing balances of the previous year and the previous year was 2013. The closing balance for capital account 23,456. The closing balance for the bank account 11,234, which is a favorable balance. Transaction two, 11 new members paid 120 entrance fees and this must be capitalized. Transaction three, the annual subscription fees amount to 220. During the current year, 49 members paid their 2014 subscription. While seven members were in arrears with their subscription in respect of 2014. What's happening here is that 49 paid their subscription, while seven is still owing in subscriptions for 2014. Then nine members paid their subscription in respect of 2015 in advance. In other words, nine members have paid for the new period 2015. Six of the eight members who had not paid their subscription in respect of 2013, when was 2013? Last year. Six of these that were owing last year paid this during the current year. The amount still in arrears, meaning owing should be written off. Number four, gardener's wages paid for the year 3,600. A cleaner received a monthly payment of 250. The payment included an advance payment for January 2015. Refreshments purchased 1,348. Grants profit on the refreshments, 1,348. Cups and saucers bought, 2,360. Depreciation calculated for this year on all crockery, 630. The municipality charges rent of 1,000 rent per month for the soccer field and the club house. We started this year with rent payable of 1,000 rent, and we closed this year with rent paid in advance of 1,000. Honorarium paid to the secretary or treasurer amounts to 1,800. Proceeds from the year end function, 2,543. Ticket sales from the social function at league finance, 3,450. Six. Remember, we are required to prepare the receipts and payment for the year ended 31st of December 2014 and thereafter prepare the membership or subscription fee account. The receipts and payment account will be prepared in the general ledger. In this account, we will summarize all transactions of receipt and all the payments that were made during the financial period. We will record both revenue and capital items. In this account, we will start by reflecting the opening balance 
of the bank account. In line transaction one, we were given a favorable opening bank balance of 11,234. As a favorable balance, this item will be reflected at the beginning of 2014 on the debit side as balance brought down amount 11,234. The line transaction two dealt with 11 new members who paid 120 entrance fee, which must be capitalized. Entrance fee it's income that has been banked. It will therefore be shown in the receipts and payment account on the debit side at the end of the financial period as entrance fees. And the total income received is 1,320, calculated as 120 times 11. The third transaction is the annual subscription fees amounting to 220 rent per member. 49 members paid their 2014 subscriptions. This is income received. It will therefore be banked. And because it is banked, it will also be shown on the debit side as a receipt of the receipt and payment account. As membership fees received of 2014, calculated as 49 times 220, giving a total of 10,780. Further on, seven members were in areas in respect of 2014. These are subscriptions that are owing. It is not income that has been received. It will therefore not be recorded in the bank and as well as in the receipt and payment account. Then there were nine members who paid in respect of 2015. This is income received for 2015. It will therefore be deposited in the bank account. Because it is debited in the bank account, we will therefore debit the receipts and payment account with membership fees for 2015, calculated as 9 times 220, giving us a total of 1,980. And further on, there were eight members who were owing in 2013. Of these, only six members paid in respect of 2013. The six that paid represent income that has been banked in 2014. It will therefore also be shown in the receipt and payment account as a receipt of membership fees for 2013, calculated as six times 220, giving a total of 1,320. The next transaction is line four, where the gardener wages was paid for the year. The total amount paid 3,600. This entry will be shown on the credit side as a payment at the end of 2014, shown as wages amount 3,600. This was not the only wage that was paid. Line 5 refers to wages that were paid to a cleaner on a monthly basis of 250. This cleaner was also paid one month in advance. It therefore means that the cleaner was paid wages for 13, not for 12 months. We will therefore multiply 250 by 13 months and arrive at a total of 3,250, which is added to 3,600 to arrive at total wages of 6,850. 
In line transaction six, refreshments were purchased and an amount of 1,348 was paid. Refreshment as expenses will be shown on the credit side of the receipts and payment account. And the amount credited will be 1,348. Line transaction seven is about gross profit on the refreshments, 1,348. Gross profit is not income received. It's a calculation that we have arrived at. It is therefore not an entry in the bank account. It will also not be an entry in the receipt and payment account. In transaction eight, we bought cups and saucers, amount 2,360. On the payment side of the refreshments, we are showing that check payment of crockery, 2,360. Transaction line nine, depreciation calculated for the year on all crockery, 630. Depreciation, it's not cash paid. It's an adjustment entry that we made through calculations. It is therefore not an entry for receipts and payment because it's not cash paid out of the bank. Transaction line 10 is the municipality who charges rent of 1,000 rent per month. So it means per year it will be 12,000. But we made also an advance payment of 1,000 rent. Therefore, it means we've paid rental for 13 months, not for 12 months. Therefore, we've issued a check for 13,000. That's what we will record in the receipts and payment rental of 13,000. Transaction 11 deals with honorarium paid to the secretary or the treasurer. The total amount paid 1,800. As a payment, it will be shown on the credit side of the receipts and payment account as honorarium of 1,800. Line transaction 12 deals with proceed from the year end function 2,543. As a receipt, it was deposited in the bank. It will therefore be shown with the receipts on the debit side as proceeds from year end function, the total amount deposited 2,543. Transaction 13, which is the last transaction for the year of 2014. It's ticket sales from the social function at the league finals. The total amount received, 3,456. It will be reflected with receipts on the debit side as ticket sales from social function. Total amount, 3,456. The receipts and payment account will then be closed off to determine the closing balance for 2040, which will be the opening balance in 2015. We will therefore close with a debit total because it gives us the highest amount. Carry it over to the credit side. Calculate the missing figure as the balance carried down, which is a closing balance at the end of 2014, which will be shown on the debit side at the beginning of 2015 as balance brought down. Note that the entries that were recorded in the receipts and payment account are the same entries that are normally recorded in the bank account. Usually in the bank account, on the debit side, we are showing total receipt. That's exactly what we've done with the receipts and payment account. The debit side reflect the total receipts for the clubs. In the bank account, we reflect on the credit side the total payments. Indeed, this account also reflects the total payments that the clubs have made during the year. In this example, we have read of transactions where income was received in advance or expenses paid in advance 
all income in areas, all expenses in areas. Let us look at how we treat such transactions. Where income is received and exceeds 12 months, the overlapping months, meaning the 13th month, the 14th month, the 15th month, will be treated as income received in advance. Income received in advance in our books increases liabilities. It will therefore become part of the accounts payable. When the income received is less than 12 months, it means there's income that is owing or in arrears. Such income that is owing is treated as accrued income. Accrued income therefore increases our assets. It therefore becomes one of the accounts receivables for expenses. If expenses paid exceeds 12 months, we've paid for, 12, for 13 months, we've paid for 15 months, we've paid for 16 months. Those overlapping months are treated as expenses paid in advance. Expenses paid in advance increases assets. They are therefore part of the accounts receivables. If expenses paid are less than 12 months, it means there are expenses that remain unpaid at the end of the period. Therefore, the amount owing or the amount that is in area is accrued expense. Accrued expense will increase liabilities and it is part of the accounts payables. Credit losses, where subscription fee is written off, it will be treated as credit losses. The second requirement of the exercise is to prepare the subscription fee account. This account will reflect all transaction affecting the membership fees. Let us look at the breakdown for line transaction three that deals with the subscriptions. The annual subscription fees amounted to 220 per member. During the current year, 49 members paid their 2014 subscriptions. This income was deposited in the bank. To complete the double entry system, the subscription fee as an income account will be credited at the end of 2014 with the contra details of banks showing the subscription received of, of 2014, amount 10,780. Next are the nine members who paid their subscriptions in respect of 2015 in advance. This is also income that has been deposited in the bank, which will be credited in the subscription fee as bank for subscription received for 2015, 1980 This is income that has been received for 2015. It must therefore be excluded in the income for 2014 when financial statements are drawn. We will therefore adjust this account by debiting it with the same entry and the contra account will read as the income received in advance, which will become a liability in our books. What we are saying with this liability is that this income is not for this year, it must be included in the income for 2015. Next are the seven members who are in areas with their subscription in respect of 2014. What this is saying is that there are seven members who haven't as yet paid their membership fee for 2014. This is income that belongs to the current period. It must therefore be added to the income of this financial period. 
We will therefore do that by creating an asset called accrued income. We will therefore credit the subscription fee account with accrued income of 1,540. As we credit the subscription fee account, the accrued income as an asset will be debited with the same entry. What we are saying is that this income hasn't as yet been received, but we are expecting to receive it in the coming period, which is 2015. The next deals with six of the eight members who had not paid their subscription in respect of 2013, paid this during the current year. As we deal with this transaction, we will compare it with the members that were owing in 2014. What did we do with these members in 2014 who were owing? We have increased our income with the amount that is owing so that we include it in this current financial period. We have done exactly the same thing with this entry in 2013. We had eight members who were owing in 2013. This income that we're expecting from eight members was added or included in the total income for 2013. We therefore created an asset in 2013 for the outstanding membership fees of eight members. In the current year, we are expecting to receive this income from these members. In this year, we will therefore show the eight members that were owing last year on the debit side of the subscription <coughs> fee account at the beginning of the period as accrued income, total amount 1,760. We are expecting to receive this income in the current period of 2014. What have we received for this transaction in 2014? We have only received payment from six members. We, de we debited our bank account with a deposit of 1,320. The difference, according to the last transaction, it says the outstanding balance of 2013 should be written off as irrecoverable. What is the outstanding balance? The outstanding balance will be the difference between what was owing last year and what has been paid in the current period. We have received 1,320, 440 is still outstanding. That is the amount that must be written off as credit losses. As we credit the subscription fee with credit losses, the credit loss expense account will be debited with the same entry of 440. After we have recorded all the transactions affecting the subscription fees, this account will then be closed off to determine the total income that should have been received from all the registered members in 2014. We will therefore close it with the total that has been calculated on the credit side, which will be carried over to the debit side Calculate the missing figure of 12,320. Show it with a contra account of income and expenditure. This amount represents the total income that should have been received from all registered members. We can also use this amount to calculate the total number of registered members in the club. We can take the amount and divide it by 220 to determine the numbers of registered members. Work through these two activities. The first activity you are required to prepare the subscription fee account for the year ending 31st of July 2017.
In the second activity, you are also required to prepare the subscription fee account as well as the receipt and payment account showing the breakdown of the subscriptions collected. Thank you.